I was still in high school. And I had come to New York, and I was hanging out with Lester Del Rey and Algis Budrys and uh, Harry Harrison and, and, and all these people who belonged to the Hydra Club. The Hydra Club was a uh, uh, a, a writer's drinking and, and schmoozing uh, society. They would get together once a week or once every two weeks in uh, uh, in, uh, in Jay Stanton's apartment, and uh, which is down on First Avenue. And they would stand around and they would just talk, and there would be El Sprague de Camp. There's a great story told about El Sprague de Camp. El Sprague de Camp is supposed to be this great writer of funny stories. He's, he's one of the great... Everybody says, oh, he writes very funny stories. And he does. And, and, this, and, 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 they, and they, t- they told me that one night they noticed Sprague, who's a tall, slim, very ascetic gentleman with a, with a, with a mustache. I mean, he looks like something out of a Louis Auchincloss novel, you know, or the late George Apley. I mean, he really looks, he's an elegant, well turned out man who speaks very precisely, very academically. And he had a, he had a, he had a pad and pencil and he was, he would stand behind a group of people who were talking and he would be writing things down. So finally, after about three hours, people jumped him. They said, come on, Sprague, what the hell are you writing? And they looked and he had been writing down all of the funny things that people said because he wanted to figure out how humor worked. He didn't understand. He was trying to analyze it. He was trying to analyze it. He was trying to dissect it and put it in. I mean, that's the kind of... Even, anyhow, so, so Hubbard was there. Now, Hubbard, was, Hubbard was, uh, uh, was, 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 was legendary among the pulp writers. He'd been writing pulp stories for years. Most of his biography was was made up. Uh, it was, you know, he 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 created his own mythology about himself. But one of the things that was true about him was that he was one of the very first writers ever to have an electric typewriter, and he had one of those huge original IBM Selectric. Well, uh, it was he, before that. It was, I think, it was even before an IBM Selectric. It was something like a big LC Smith. I mean, it was just gigantic. It was, you know, if you tied it around someone's feet, you could put them in a bay, and no one, no one would ever find again. them. Forget about it. So. Uh, uh, he, 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 he tried to figure out a way to write faster because you're only being paid a penny a word, two cents a word, three cents a word. That was the max. That's all you got. The best, the best markets paid three cents a word when you caught them. Didn't you know that? <laughs> no. Yeah, they you, paid by the word. They paid by the word. Of course. I wrote for, that's the way I wrote. When I started writing in 1955, 56, I got paid a penny a word. I would sit up all night. I'd write a 3,000 word short story. I'd take it in the next day to Ziff Davis Publishing at One Park Avenue, and they would read it right on the spot. And Paul Fairman would say, "Okay, I'll buy it and give me a voucher for thirty dollars." And I would take it down. I'd go and pay my rent. I was living in a ten dollar a week room, so thirty dollars was three Boom. weeks. Yeah, and and uh, I mean, but then at, in those days you could get you could get a, a spaghetti dinner at Ronzoni's on Times Square. I was working on Times Square. I was working at the Broadway Bookshop between the Victoria and Astor oh, theaters. God. It was wonderful. That's when I got to see. Gwen Verdon naked. Anyway, this is alone is worth the price of it. That's, 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 no, Woo. trust me, you don't want to go there. Okay. So I, I worked. I worked the shift. It was great. Broadway in those days was great because I worked the six o'clock in the evening shift till three in the morning, and after midnight was when all the interracial couples came out. Was when all the real kookaboos and kadotes came out. It was a great time. Oh man, that must have been wonderful. Oh, it was wonderful time. And right across the street was the Ronzoni Spaghetti House, and you could get a spaghetti dinner with two meatballs and bread and coffee or iced tea for a buck. And it was, and and I would eat there every night, and uh, and down the street was pizza was fifteen cents a slice, wow. uh, and 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 I would go over, I would go over to the flea circus and listen to uh, Tiny Tim play his mandolin. Except he wasn't called Tiny Tim then; he had another this name. Is, and he was, he was just starting. Just he was just starting, and and, 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 and it, was the, oh, it was it was it was great times. Oh, I was telling you about Hubbard with the typewriter. Right. To 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 become. Faster because he was only being paid a penny a word, two cents a word, three cents a word. He he had attached to the wall. He worked against a wall. Had a little table set against the wall. On the wall behind the table where the typewriter sat, he had installed one of those spindles that butchers have the brown paper on a roll of brown paper. Oh, yeah. And he would roll the brown paper, the butcher's paper, into the typewriter and start typing. And when it got too much, he would rip it off with a with a T square. He would rip it off and throw it behind him and keep typing and. That's how he would take the manuscript in, and it, 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 that way he didn't have to stop to put paper in the in the typewriter. So well, he was cranking at that point. He was really cranking it, but he and he wrote a lot. He wrote not just science fiction, but he wrote he wrote westerns, he wrote mysteries, he wrote all kinds of stuff. But the novels, the fantasy novels, the Slaves of Sleep, the Triton uh, that he did were wonderful, wonderful stuff. And and Slan, uh, 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 Slan is Van Vogt. I'm sorry, Slan is Van Vogt. Slan is not is not uh, uh, Hubbard. Uh, Hubbard did a final blackout. Slaves of Sleep, uh, The Triton, and, and about two dozen others. But 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 they're really well worth reading. Fear. He did a book called Fear. What's that about? Fear is a, is a psycholo- the first psychological horror novel. It's 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 literally about fear. He did one called Death's Deputy. He read somewhere that um, uh, insurance. 
uh, 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 adjusters had a table where they where they had a, where they had lists of people to whom accidents don't happen, but everybody around them have accidents. And he called it he called the guy a debt's deputy. And he tells this it's a it's a wonderful story about this guy who wanders through life and all around him people are dying and falling off buildings and all this shit. A beautiful book. He also did one called Typewriter in the Sky where this where this guy realizes that his life is that he's that, that his life is being written by God in a dirty bathrobe sitting on the edge of a bed with a typewriter. So, <laughs> well, I got a mind full of this crap. It's a, a, yeah, a, but it's incredible to hear all these connections. That well, he was, I don't he, think people know. He, he he must have had a he must have had a dozen pseudonyms, and the ones of the, the Kilkenny cats were written on the name Kurt von Ratchen. So so I'm at this evening. And, and, I, and I'm just a high school kid, and I've been, I've been coming from, from, from Cleveland, Ohio, for Christ's sake, and, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm in among the giants, for God's sakes, and I'm just sort of sitting there quietly. And Lester Del Rey, who, uh, who, who, who was a very well-known writer, and uh, subsequently became Del Rey Books, and blah, 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 Lester, in his childhood, had been a stump minister like Marjo Gortner. He had been a revivalist. He was a, he was a child evangelist. And so, so Ron was complaining that he, that he was breaking his ass writing and he was never going to get, you know, they would find him slumped over the typewriter one day. This is, this is how, because there was no annuity, there's no insurance, there's no nothing, and you can't keep it up forever. I mean, I've been at it for 50 years, for God's sakes. I'm lucky still to be able to write. And, 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 and these guys were, were sort of in sight of that, and they knew that they had to do something. And Ron said, there's got to be a, a better way to make money. So Lester says, start a religion. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Start a religion. And he said, and, and Ron, Ron said, yeah, not a bad, now what kind of a religion? Well, one guy contributed... Uh, Reich's organ box. Another one uh, 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 came up with engrams, which were which were you know forgotten, lost memory or whatever it was. And sure enough, Ron went ahead and he and he, and he cobbled up Dianetics and he wrote this book because yeah, it has a little bit of all of that, all of that stuff in it. And it and it and it and it took off. And he be, 